So good afternoon, everyone. I'll just wait a few um, minutes to, well, not a few minutes, a couple of a few seconds, just to let everybody come in while we're waiting for people to join. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to our tutoring webinar this afternoon. My name is Kate Goujon from the Sales Enablement Team at Pearson. Unfortunately, our Head of Tutoring, Melanie Williams-Brown, was due to present with me this afternoon, but is unwell due to COVID. But we do have Michelle Watson, our School and Tutor Relationship Manager, who is looking after the chat today. So please feel free to add any questions and thought in the chat as Michelle is our Pearson tutoring guru and what she doesn't know about our program is not worth knowing. So if you could say hello, Michelle. Thanks, <laughs> no Kate. No pressure. <laughs> As I say, no pressure then whatsoever. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. I know your time's really precious um, at the moment and you're faced with lots of challenges. Any questions you've got, please do use the Q&A or drop them in the chat and I'll respond to you. Thanks, Kate. OK, so so before we get started and um, we do have a couple of questions that I hope you don't mind answering for us so that we can get a feel for our audience today. Um, so while I give you a bit of time to fill in the poll, I'll just take you through the agenda. So this afternoon, we're going to have a quick look at the evidence we have drawn from last year's programme demonstrating the impact of small group online tutoring. We'll then take you through the different funding options available, highlight some of the myths that we commonly hear in our conversations with schools and provide you with a quick overview of Pearson's tutoring programme. We will also hear from a teacher who will talk you through their experience of the tutoring programme so far. And then we should have some time for questions at the end of the session, but please do feel free to post in the chat as we go along, as we already mentioned. OK, so um, let's get started into some of the content then. Um, so after almost a year of running the Pearson tutoring, we have monitored the impact of our small group tutoring. And we would like to share with you some of the evidence to date showing the significant impact of the programme. We believe that as providers of qualifications and resources from, nine, from five to 19, we are in a unique position to offer quality tuition from highly qualified UK-based teachers. I cannot emphasize enough the experience and quality of our teachers who are trained in online tutoring and will work in partnership with your school to understand the needs of your students and report back on their progress to you. So well-trained teacher tutors really do have an increased impact on outcomes, um, but don't take my word for it. We have case studies and links to substantial research highlighting the benefits and positive impact of small group tutoring on our website and in the links that will be shared after this webinar. As you can see, the increase in average initial assessment scores was significant last year with more than 67% increase following the programme. This was reflected across the most disadvantaged students, seeing an 80% improvement for year 11 pupil premium. And it's been fantastic to see the huge increases in learner confidence, understanding and engagement being reported. So just to give you an overview, this slide shows the overarching progress and increase in assessment scores before and after tutoring across all subjects, key stages and regions. To give you a snapshot of the impact at subject level, we saw an 88% improvement in math assessment scores, 51% in English, and 74% in science. You can access more a more detailed report demonstrating the impact of our tutoring on request. So this year, there are three pots of funding available for tutoring. The National Tutoring Programme continues for a second year under, man under the management of Randstad. Pearson are continuing to offer tutoring with this route as one of the approved tuition partners. With the National Tutoring Programme or NTP route, 70% of tuition costs are covered by the NTP, which is a slight reduction from last year's programme. 
The other key change in using this route this year is that 65% of all students taking CLART must be eligible for pupil premium. For this academic year, an additional pot of funding has been ring fenced and paid directly to schools to support the provision of school led tutoring. The amount of funding schools received is calculated based on the number of pupil premium students a school has on roll and has been calculated to cover 75% of the cost of tutoring. With the school led tutoring, you have the option to use any external organisation, whether they are an approved supplier or not. And you may also choose to pay your own staff using this money. I have put a link to further detail of the school led tutoring where you can also see the allocation for your school. But in general, a typical secondary school of around a thousand pupils should receive thirty five thousand pounds. Pearson has tutoring options for both the NTP and school led route, and our team can advise you specifically on how best to make the most make this funding work for your students. The third route is the academic mentors, um, which are the mentors are graduates or, or teachers who undergo go training before being placed in a school. Um, I've just put a little bit of detail, but that's not part of our proposition, but I thought it might be useful. There is also a link to the government website if you want further information on the academic mentor route as well for you. So we are aware of some of the mixed messaging and confusion surrounding the school-led tutoring. So to bust some of the myths, if you like, school-led funding can be used in addition to the subsidised NTP funding. We are finding lots of schools are putting their pupil premium students through the NTP route and using the school-led route for other students who have been disadvantaged. Schools cannot, cannot use the school-led grant to fund the non-subsidised portion of the NTP tuition, though. For NTP, only approved suppliers can be used. Pearson, like I said, has been approved for a second year, and you are able to order NTP subsidised tutoring directly from us. For the school-led route, any external tutoring suppliers can be used. A recent change um, that wasn't that wasn't in place in September when the second year started um, it's actually been made to the NTP program is that now there are no restrictions on the number of students receiving tuition and they are no longer limited to receiving only one block in one subject. Your quota of students using NTP must be made up of the 65% pupil premium students, though where there are no such quotas via the school-led tuition route, as the funding is not just for pupil premium students. The NTP subsidy rate for this year is valid up until the 31st of July, and any unspent school-led funding will need to be returned. This year, we are offering tutoring across Key Stage 3 and 4 for Maths, English and Science. Science being recently added to our Key Stage 3 portfolio. You can book tutoring in units of one block comprising of 15 hour long sessions. For Pearson Direct Schools, the teacher student ratio can be one to one through to one to three. But for NTP, the ratio must be one to three unless the school provides written send statement. Only then can they have one to one tuition. Our online sessions are supported by Bramble, our tutoring platform partner. Bramble's cutting edge technology allows both tutors and students to talk, sketch and scare resources in real time across devices so as it really feels like they're in the same room. I've attached a link to a teacher work walkthrough and student walkthrough, as well as a tutor explanation of Bramble platform effectiveness. All of our tutors have access to a wide range of Pearson resources and lesson plans from our Active Learn and Tutors Guild materials. We provide four lesson plans with learning objectives, starter activities, main, main objectives and ideas for differentiation. All our student facing starter and main activities are optimized for sharing on screen via Bramble's platform. 
There is also sample content and lesson mapping available to the web and on, linked to the website here. Subject leads should look at this mapping in detail prior to starting tuition so that they can select which areas to cover and support the allocation of students to the groups depending on the content chosen. This slide shows you an example of the intended tutor model. We offer pre-tutoring diagnostic testing, uh, should this be beneficial, in support of the selection of students and prioritization of the subjects offered. We have built in an introductory session to support with the school tutor handover, though there is the flexibility for schools and tutors to adjust how this handover process takes place. The same is the case for um, the pre and post tuition assessment. Some schools prefer to administer these away from the suggested slot, allowing more direct teaching time. Our tutors feedback at the end of each session via the Bramble platform. Schools can access this feedback via an individual student's online room. I should also mention that the hour long sessions are recorded for safeguarding purposes, but also Bramble's new smart search function means that a student can revisit their lessons and search a particular keyword and be taken to that point in the lesson where a concept was taught. This is a fantastic feature to support reinforcement of the learning and aid revision. Time for a break from my voice and listen to Emma Morris the assistant principal of Karsh Holton Boys School, sharing her tutoring experience. So like many schools during the lockdown, we really struggled with some of our students, keeping them engaged and helping them to make meaningful progress across the curriculum. I will admit that I was a little bit sceptical about uh, tutoring at first and as a school we were a little bit slow to get going with it. We did explore a few different options and we were really impressed with the Pearson offer in terms of the support that I knew was going to be available after speaking to them and also with the quality of the materials that, the, uh, they, that were on offer. So we decided to go with Pearson and our first approach was to trial this in the summer term. I will say that this was quite an ambitious approach. We, we identified 30 students, 15 in year 10, and 15 in year nine, who were able students, but who had really fallen behind and struggled to stay engaged during periods of lockdown. And our year 10s had particularly been hit with bubbles being closed during the previous year. The first thing we did is we spoke to those students to make sure that they were on board. Um, and I will say a few of them were a little bit reluctant. We offered them a session either before school or a session after school. And what we offered to go alongside that was a breakfast for the, the early morning session, or um, it was the summer, so it was nice and hot. So we offered a snack and ice lollies for the afternoon session. So a little bit of bribery, if you like, but that seemed to work really, really well. The other thing we did was we made contact with the parents and that was really important. And in fact, lots of the parents were really, really on board with this straight away. And a few of them really did request whether their child could have more than one subject. But obviously they were only able to have one at that given time. I will say I did find the setup initially quite difficult um, and I did do it by myself because I always sort of believe in seeing a process through so that then if I get support with that um, or have admin support, um, I understand what the job entails. And initially that process was quite time consuming. However, this year um, that's been much more streamlined and it's a lot quicker and I do have somebody who supports me with that. So it's important to have things like students' email addresses, um, to have a look at your school calendar to make Make sure that um, when you've got mock exams and things like that you can avoid those weeks because obviously tutoring can't take place during those uh, those weeks and also to think really carefully about the timings of the sessions what we tried to do with our initial block was really far too ambitious students were having three sessions a week and on top of it being the summer term they were back at school and getting used to all of the challenges that have been thrown up by the pandemic they really did struggle with that However, the boys that attended nearly all of the sessions made such amazing progress and we were able to track that by the pre-tests and post-tests that the programme builds in. 
The tutors were absolutely amazing and I really loved the fact that actually when you post your blocks and you've put the times and the number of students involved, um, you were able to select a tutor and for some of the blocks I had up to 50 tutors who were available which gave me lots of choice to try and find somebody who was appropriate for the groups. I did think really carefully about how I grouped the students together and I should say that we did offer the tutoring in groups of three. It's important to check that you've got the, the technical um, resources that you need. So we did buy um, headsets for all the students um, and we made sure that we had Chromebooks available and we offered the sessions in one big space. And the advantage of that was that we only had to have one member of staff available to troubleshoot and to take the register and also just keep an eye on any behaviour issues, although there weren't really any. The tutors were brilliant at providing feedback and were really encouraging with the boys as well. And it was lovely that all of the sessions are recorded on the Bramble system and then students can go back to them and use them for revision later on. And I think that is so valuable. The other thing is, is that as a school, you can go back and you can check out those sessions as well, which is really great for, for departments across the school to see the sorts of things that the boys are doing. So we really did find that very useful. The boys who took part were really positive about it and this year what we've done is we've set it up straight away in September for some of our grade three, um, grade three, grade four borderline boys in maths and we focused on that subject because that's where we've seen the biggest um, backtrack really in skills that the students have during the pandemic. We've got at the moment 45 students and our timetable is normally a five period day but year 11 have a, an extra lesson at the end of the day. So what we've done is we've timetabled the sessions for that extra lesson so it's on their timetable as a timetabled slot that they are expected to attend. All of the boys are in groups of three and I've thought really carefully about the personalities of the students and also about the, the levels that each of those students are working at in order to make sure that those sessions are as productive as possible. Again, the tutors have been really amazing. They've been really good at picking up any problems, providing feedback, and the boys are all really, really engaged. And the feedback I'm getting already is fantastic. I will say perhaps one of our biggest success stories though was where we had a, a young man who was really struggling to re-engage after lockdown and had struggled with his attendance prior to COVID hitting. And to get him back into school, what, we've, what we offered him was a block of uh, 15 tutoring sessions through the programme. And he's had those delivered one to one because he also has SEN needs. That student made over 20% progress from his pre-test scores to his post-test scores. And one of the things I've really seen is the joy on his face when he got those post-test scores results. And his confidence has really massively improved. So as I said... We were a little bit sceptical about tutoring, but now we, we have absolutely seen the benefit that it's had for our students. And now we have over 45 of our year 11s taking part in the programme. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the progress that they make over the next 15 weeks. I've listed the different Pearson price points to give you an idea of cost implications for both options. So the unsubsidised cost of sessions is £750 for the direct to schools and £900 for the NTP. Note that you would be invoiced the full cost of a uh, direct sorry, um, you would be invoiced the full cost of a direct to school um, led block as that funding is already ring fenced and this would be purely to give you an example of the cost to you to use both routes. The subsidised cost of the one um, 15 sorry of the the 15 hour set of blocks to the tutoring works out to be £187.50 using your school-led funding and £270 plus VAT using the NTP subsidy. Assuming you place a group of three students in each block, a per pupil price is £4.17 for school-led and £6 for NTP. This summary chart shows both routes available with a reminder of the differences between the two funded routes. We really do find that depending on their circumstances, most schools tend to make the most out of both parts of funding to maximise the reach of this initiative for their students. I should reiterate 
that change again the changes to the NTP in that the students can have more than one block of tutoring across more than one subject now although you still have to have the 65 percent of students available for eligible for pupil premium via the NTP route as opposed to school-led fund tutoring which whilst that's calculated on your pupil premium numbers is not restrictive in terms of pupil premium quotas. The other main difference that I already mentioned, but just thought I should reiterate to you, is that you must have a one to three teacher tutor ratio, sorry, teacher student ratio in a session, unless the student has SE and N needs, um, where there is no restriction. Again, where there is no restriction on that though for school led. You can, of course, use the school led funding to pay your own staff. And indeed, some schools opt for this as well as benefiting from the heavily subsidized NTP tutoring. By the time you add in national insurance, pension and other costs associated with the school led tutoring, we have found that using an external provider is more cost effective and also the ability to deliver small group tutoring at a large capacity across cohorts within a school is more feasible using a tutoring provider notwithstanding the additional workload that running school tuition tutoring would have on your staff. So why would you choose Pearson to partner with you on your tutoring journey? I will emphasise again the importance of the experience and quality of our UK based teachers. In addition to the tried and tested course content and standardised assessment materials, Bramble's high tech platform to ensure a highly engaging and interactive online experience, not to mention the smart search function. The feedback, handover support and progression reporting so that you get full visibility of the impact of the program is the, the, the impact the program is having. Now, I haven't mentioned much about our school onboarding that Michelle, who's managing the chat today, heads up um, and she heads up the experience team, customer experience team and the speed and agility of her team in supporting you to get up and running as well as ongoing support is second to none. You really can be up and running within a week. Our tutoring booking system is also very flexible. Our availability allows you to schedule the sessions around what fits best with your school and the program structure and content is adaptable to meet individual needs. <clears throat> so to ar articulate what sets Pearson apart from other providers better than I ever could, I will play you a short contribution from Sharon Haig, Managing Director of Pearson Schools Qualifications. I think what really sets Pearson apart is that we have this pool of experienced and trained teachers that work with us to delivering the tutoring services. You know, they're incredibly reliable, they're all very experienced and I think what we're seeing as the tutoring really starts to begin to happen is, is having that trained teacher really does make a difference to the effectiveness of the tutoring. I've added some useful links for you in this, this slide. I would encourage you to have a look at the evidence detailing the impact of small um, group tutoring. If you are considering booking tutoring with Pearson, the booking tips and our tutor's top tips will be really useful. And you can also arrange a one-to-one -one meeting with one of my sales colleagues to discuss your needs in more detail. They will be happy to advise on how to maximise your funding pot this year and also have a more in-depth conversation regarding the programme, the best practice and next steps. Or if you feel you have enough information and ready to order, the order form link is also listed here too. And I think both the contact us and the order form link is going to be popped in the chat now as well. So at Pearson, we are always looking at how we best support your schools across the country. So we ask thousands of educators about the challenges they face and what their priorities are each term. I would encourage you to have a look at the latest secondary insights report and subsequent support in place based on your top priorities. And the link is here on this page again for that report. As we get closer to the summer 2022 exam series, we believe that the tutoring programme will play a vital role in supporting your students in their studies, building their confidence and helping them to progress to the next stage. 
I'd like to draw your attention to some services and resources we think that in conjunction with the tutoring programme really complement the revision cycle for your students. Pearson Mock Service provides schools and colleges with Pearson Edexcel papers for use in mock examinations. The papers are sat in school and marked by Pearson examiners, providing consistency of marking across the full cohort. The mock results are uploaded to Results Plus for item level analysis. This really does support in building student confidence in preparations for high stake exams, which is as important now more than ever for your students. Do have a look at the linked guide for more information on this service. Many of you will also be familiar with the Results Plus for post results analysis, but this free online tool also includes mock analysis. This really is a powerful tool to provide automatic insight into student performance to support planning, revision and intervention. And finally, our Pearson Revise series offers a range of formats for classroom and independent study to support all learners throughout the academic year. This series includes revision guides, workbooks, practice papers, revision cards and planners. And there's also a free revised student app available. Um, what's more, student schools are entitled to 50% discount on this range of support resources. So if you would be so kind as to complete a second poll for us, this would be much appreciated. And I'm sure that Michelle has been answering your questions in the chat, but if there are any additional questions or common themes coming through, Michelle? No, Kate, all the questions are answered. Um, it was just one big question that came through was the percentage for pupil premium on tutoring funded by school led. Um, no minimum requirement for that one. Yeah, no, that, that's quite a common um, question that we get asked because because it's because it's been calculated and the actual funding is calculated on your pupil premium numbers. But in, in fact, if you read quite carefully on the web, government website, um, the wording is along the lines of that you can use that funding for any student that you feel has been disadvantaged. So it doesn't actually stipulate that you need to use it on pupil premium funding for that one. Thanks, Kate. Okay, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to um, fill out a second poll for you. I can see that there's still some answers, some people still filling in. So we'll leave that up for you um, a little bit longer. If there are uh, no questions at all left, though, I'd just like to take, thank you for your time this afternoon. I hope the session has been useful. Um, please do reach out if you have any further queries um, surrounding anything that we've discussed in this webinar. So have a good evening, everyone.